come back and side dress. You could do it that way, right? Where you come back and just sprinkle a little more powder around it. Or, or, <laughs> we can up our game, which is where I have not been a good girl in the last two years completely. Hello, lovely. So, these are my three door prizes today. So somebody's gonna get to go home with a liquid. Somebody, somebody. Okay, this is Holy Mackerel. This is a 310. And this is Flower's Kiss, okay? Flower's Kiss is a 10.3, 0.5, but it's got some cow mag in it, okay? So, my favorite thing in my past, which I'm gonna make a point to do it this year, is make a batch of this up in this right here, okay? The nice thing about these is you pump. I can hold my bourbon and Diet Coke, margarita, sangria, glass of wine, whatever, and I can foliar feed, okay? This is a mist. It's not a big droplet, so you can actually foliar feed early in the morning or in the evening after the heat has started to come off. So that goes on the plant. On the, plant. Really on the plant, yes. Now let's talk about why that's so important. So a dry fertilizer is gonna start from the bottom down here with the roots and have to work its all the way up into the plant. Does that make sense? That's a long way to travel, okay? A liquid, foliar, you could do it this way, you could do it this way. Not saying this for all liquids, but our liquids. I did this at a conference last week and my vice president was there and he was like, dear God, don't spill that. <laughs> he was like, the hotel will not appreciate us. <laughs> I was like, come on boss. So you're gonna set your little dial. Look at that. You didn't have to mix or anything. You can just follow your feet, okay? Yep, right here. So, this one is just our flowers kiss. You could do holy mackerel. So it's the same as the bags. Little bit, but different because the bags, the dry fertilizer has to get broken down and taken up by the roots, okay? When you foliar feed, and if you do it in the morning, so the time the sun is awakening, the plant starts to wake up too. Like I really wanted to play music when they were unrolling it, like a Oh, you know, the plants like, yes, it's sunshine. Yeah. So same thing. The plants awaken. When they awaken on their cells, they have cells called stomata. And the stomata open up early in the morning and they do not close until it is dark. They're like little straws all over the leaf. So when you foliar feed, that plant gets to suck all that goodness into its system and take it in immediately. It's kind of like ladies when we go get our hair done and we come out of the beauty parlor and we're like, I am looking good today, right? Plant feels the same way. The plant is like, oh, I got fed. I, I look fantastic. I feel better. It's because it got to take it in immediately. That's why Scott's miracle Grow hose-in sprayer, that's why it's so popular, because you see results quickly. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's a much faster turnaround in feeding a plant, is via liquid, if that makes sense. Just like the little prill balls, or when it's granulated, it takes a little bit longer to get broken down and taken up by the plant. Mm -hmm. Other companies too, when you are looking at soil, since we've brought the elephant out of the room, read your labels. When you shop, read labels. Don't go to your garden center and go, what's the cheapest I could buy, okay? Soil costs money. It, it costs a lot to make. Um, it's not a cheap process. There's a lot of issues that, well not issues, but registration things that companies have to do. Like we have to register all of our products with all the states and list everything that's in there in our ingredients. We have to do quality assurance testing on a regular basis for states, things like that too. That all happens in the background. 
The other thing, when you look at fertilizers, know your fertilizer companies too. Know who they are, what they support, what are their ingredients in there, what are their salt contents, how much, you know, what am I putting exactly. That will help you become a better gardener too. But you do not have to buy an azalea food, a fruit and flower, a tropical plant food. You don't need 10 different fertilizers in your cupboard. You need, again, something good with nitrogen, something with phosphorus, and always look at your potassium and multivitamins, okay? All right, so now that you've got your plants planted and you've got them fertilized, and we're gonna talk a little bit about water. So, if this is new to you, it is a good rule of thumb, and I know your time is precious too, but going out, and especially if you're doing container gardening of any sort, putting your finger around in the pot is very important. You know what I mean? Don't assume just because you put it here, it was wet, doesn't mean that over here it was dry, okay? The other piece is on the ground, same thing. Putting out watering, um, for instance, we'll have people say, I put my sprinkler on in the vegetable garden every single day. All right, but how much water did you actually give the vegetable garden? Measuring that out. So putting a small little rain gauge out in the vegetable and the raised bed is helpful until you get to know those roots are acclimated and really large. Just because you come home and it's been 95 degrees on May 17th and that plant is wilty does not mean that it needs water. Go out and check around the root system and see, is it moist or is it just feeling the heat of the day? Does that make sense? In your vegetable garden, I do encourage you to um, mulch around your vegetables. I would use something like pine straw. You could use a form of compost if you wanted to as well around the plants as a mulch just to hold moisture in. If you use a hardwood, make sure it's a chunky one so you can just rake it back and not get that turned into the garden, okay? Does get your nutrients locked up. The reason that happens when we turn hardwood into soil is our beneficial microbes, instead of helping the plant, they go break down the mulch, okay? So chunky, be able to rake it back. Pine straw is great because it's little slithers, and if it gets turned in, it ain't no big deal. Um, pest control in the garden, <clears throat> looking in the early morning, very important, and in the evening for bugs. Become an investigator, looking at your leaves, like underneath leaves, leaves. If you see your tomato plant disappearing on the stems, you probably have a tomato hornworm. So you're gonna need to look hard for the tomato hornworm because he's gonna be the same color as that tomato stem. You're gonna need to look for poop. Um, if you've had squash bugs in the past, look on the underneath of your squash leaves for the little eggs, they're red. They usually are in clusters. Look for that too, if that makes sense but be out in the garden on a regular basis. If you have collards, Swiss chard, kale, broccoli, any of the cool season crops planted right now, and they start looking like Swiss cheese, you probably have leaf roller worms out there. It's kind of telling you that it's time for the plant to go because it's, that's why the leaf rollers are there. And some of you I've noticed have notebooks, which I love to see a notebook. Um, it's really good to keep a diary in the vegetable garden side of things. That'll help you know when bugs are going to come. Usually they'll come about the same time the following year. That way you can notate which one it was, when it came, what did you treat with, that type of thing. Your notebook is also your friend. You can write down things like who, what tomatoes did you grow last year? Which ones were the best producers? Did you try that new rodeo tomato? Did it outdo the celebrity? You can write that in your, per se. Um, for instance, my husband's favorite tomatoes are the darker skinned ones. Like his fav most favorite is chocolate cherry. Like the, 
chocolate cherry, he will hoard the things once they start producing. Bugs and stuff, there's a great book that you could probably pick up at half, half price books. It's called the, the Good, the Bag, and the Ugly. It's called the Texas Bug Book. It was by um, Howard Garrett and Malcolm Beck, but it's got a lot of great pictures. And search your Texas A&M website often, okay? All right, when you look at tomato plants, just to give you a little background, read your tags so Saturday I took home 12 two little baby six packs of your new rodeo tomato because I'm going to do a grow test against all of my competitors out in the market just to see how we look against them and that's part of my job I need to know my competition and I am good at that I'm, I'm very honest I mean I'll I'll show it if they kick our butts. So when you look at your tomato tags, read them because there are two types. There's determinate and indeterminate.